All right, guys, so let's get started. Now, I do have a page called Reference where I'm going to be referencing colors and font sizes and stuff like that uh, because um, I kind of don't remember any of these um, because I'm going to be building this entire thing from scratch, right? And we're going to add all these information that we need to give to the developer when handing off the file. Or if we are building this in Webflow ourselves, this information is going to be helpful. Or if you're coding this yourself, this information is going to be helpful. So we're going to kind of, I'll be referencing this a little bit now and then to kind of understand, um, to make sure that the design remains the exact same. Okay, so let's get started. Now, obviously the first question is to decide which artboard or frame size do you want to use, right? If you click on F, which is the frame tool, you get a list of options over here. Now we're going to start off with desktop, right? And when I say desktop, I mean desktop breakpoint, which means it could be laptops, it could be monitors or, you know, windows or laptops as well. Now we've got a couple of artboard sizes, right? We've got 1440, we've got 1152, we've got 1440 again, we've got 1500 and we've got 1280. Now, which one do we choose? Which is the right way to go about it? Now, honestly, you could choose either of these, but there's an industry standard to start off with 1440 because that's the smallest screen size. Now, I know what you're saying that 1142 and 1280 are also smaller screen size. But the thing is that these are less commonly used nowadays. And also 1440 is in quite a range where it is optimal for starting your first design. And we're going to see how, how this works for other breakpoints such as 1920 or 3840, which is a 4K resolution, right? And we're going to see how that adapts. So I'm going to start off by clicking on this desktop breakpoint, and that's going to create this sort of a canvas where I've got 1440 by 1024, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start off by uh, double clicking on it and just calling this uh, 1440 uh, or just say website and underscore 1440. Right? So this is what we have. Now let's actually start off by understanding a few simple basics. All right. So I'm going to take the example of the navigation bar that we have over here, and I'm going to go ahead and explain that. So what we're going to do is first of all, let's set the color of this to black. Okay. There we go. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sort of a rectangle. Okay. Okay, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and make this a little dark. And uh, I'm not gonna design anything, I'm just gonna place elements to kind of explain things. So I'm gonna create one rectangle over here. Okay, this is gonna be our logo. And then here we've got uh, small links. So we let's say we've got three links. Okay, so we can select all these three, we can press Ctrl G to group them and we have this, all right? So this is basically how it's going to look on a 1440 display, all right? Now let's take it to another level, all right? Let's go and duplicate this by pressing Control or Command D, all right? And try to use as many shortcuts as you can. Um, Control or Command D is going to duplicate the artboard. And what you wanna do is, let's go ahead and set this to website 1920, all right? Great. Now let's go ahead and make this 1920. So I'm gonna go and set the width to 1920 and uh, the height is going to be 1080p, right? Great. Now, this is definitely not how the nav bar is supposed to look, right? Now, obviously we want to structure it in a certain way that this navigation bar takes up the entire space, right? Great, but what about these elements? What do we do with it? I mean, how is it going to look? Now, a couple of ways. One is that we could have it look like this. Now, let me quickly go ahead and make sure that the spacing on the left is 50 over here, okay? And over here also we want it to be 50, so I'm just gonna move it 50 pixels, all right? And over here, this is 50 pixels. And over here, also, we want it to be 50 pixels, all right? By the way, um, if you want to see this uh, distance, you can hold on Alt or Option on your keyboard and just hover on any element and you'll be able to see this. Then you can just slowly move elements. There we go, 50. Now, obviously, this is version one. So let me just move this over to the side and I'm gonna press T and I'm gonna call this version one, okay? And I'm gonna use a nice font. Uh, let's go make this 50 pixels or let's make it 100 pixels. All right, now this is version one. Let's take a look at version two, right? Let's select this and I'm gonna hold Alt. I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift and then I'm gonna drag it outside, okay? And this is gonna be version two, okay? Now, one thing is you can define that this entire content can stretch up to the edge of the screen or you can say, if the screen size increases, do not scale it, right? Do not scale it. Keep it the same size. And over here, if you see, this, the size over here is 1440 pixels, right? Because this width is 1440. So which means 
that this, all right, is going to be 1440 pixels. So what we can do is if I go ahead and let me just go quickly go ahead and delete this. I'm gonna copy this, all right, and I'm gonna paste it over here. Press Control G to group and put it in the center, all right? Then I'm gonna select, hold down Control and click to select an element that is inside a group. Okay, and I'm gonna move this out to the side over here. Now I'm gonna hold down Control and the backslash key to kind of uh, hide the bar so that we can focus over here. Now, as you can see, this is how it was on 1440. But on 1920, we have two different ways to go about it. And this is a design decision that you as a designer has to take. Do you want the content to sit in this exact size or do you want it to expand, right? Now you can choose either, right? And that's a decision you have to take. Now let's take this another step further and see how this looks on a 3840 screen resolution, right? Now let's go and um, create another duplicate. So I'm gonna duplicate this website 1920. I'm gonna move this over to this side. Okay, and um, we're gonna co copy this version one. I'm gonna move that over here. All right, and I'm gonna say version one. And I'm gonna say this the website is going to be 3840, okay? And the height is gonna be 2160, right? So let's set this to 3840 and 2160. Okay, so this is pretty much how a 4K monitor screen looks like. Again, so let's look at version one, okay? So we have version one where we kind of expand this to this. So let's do the same thing over here. Okay, so let's expand this all to the end. And this is going to be over here, all right? And make sure that, you know, this is 50 pixels to the left. Okay, so this is version one. Do you want your nav bar to look like this? Most of the times I don't think so because you don't want the logo to be all the way to the left and you know, the nav links to be all the way to the right. You kind of want them to be closer together. Let's make another version. I'm gonna duplicate this again, okay? This is going to be version two, okay? And here in version two, um, let's make sure that we keep this one where we can see that the element is in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this, copy this, all right? And go ahead and uh, delete this and paste this over here and we're gonna put this into the center. I'm gonna hold down control and then I'm going to move this rectangle, uh, you know, so that it takes up the entire space. All right, now this is version two. So version one is it adapts to the edges of the screen and version two, it does not adapt, it stays to the center. Now this might feel very too narrow for a big massive screen or a big monitor that is there, but there is another version that we can do. So let's go ahead and duplicate this, right? So I'm gonna hold on Alt and Option and drag this. And this is going to be version three. Version three is gonna be a little different. What I'm gonna say is I'm gonna actually gonna pick the one that is 1920, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and paste it over here. Oh, sorry, let's, let's grab that entire thing. Control G and uh, I'm gonna see Control V. Oh, sorry. All right, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the center and you know, just move these out like so. Great, so as you can see, we've got three variations. So version one is that the content moves to the edges of the screen. Version two, it stays the same exactly how we designed it on 1440 pixels. Version three is that it does expand, but it stops at a certain point, right? So these are the three various directions that we can go. And which direction to take is a design decision that you have to make. All right, and I'm quickly gonna go ahead and just make sure that I put down all, uh, add like a subtext over here and I'm gonna say version one. I'm, um, this is going to be stretch. Okay, version two, this is going to be fixed width. Um, and let's move to this one, all right? So this again, version one is going to be stretch. Version two is going to be fixed width. Okay, and version three is going to be fixed width variable. Okay, now these are not really technical terms. I'm just making up these terms so that you guys of you guys kind of understand, right? So pretty much what people do is they either go for fixed width 
or they either go for fixed width variable, right? As you can see, the distance over here is very small, but the distance over here is not. And to make it even better for you guys to understand what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add rulers. So I'm gonna press Shift R on the keyboard and that's gonna get you rulers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just um, add these rulers like so. Okay, so this is the fixed width, okay? And over here, I'm gonna add rulers. This is going to be fixed width. But over here, this is a variable where the fixed width increases up to a certain limit, right? So this is pretty much what we want to do. So the way we wanna go about it is for our website, we're gonna be using this third approach where it's fixed width variable. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep expanding this container, this width, until it reaches a width of 1920. Right? And after that, I'm not going to expand it, right? Because what we have here is, is the maximum width that I have defined, right? Now you can make this a little bit more bigger as well. How much ever you want, you can define a maximum width and it will expand only to that width. So what you're gonna do is you are not going to define a fixed width, you're going to define a max width, all right? And this is something that you need to convey to the developer or even when you're building in Webflow to say that the browser needs to understand that there is going to be a max width, but there is not going to be a minimum width or there is not going to be a fixed width, right? Because in reality, if you take a look at it, there are three things that we can take a look at. We have fixed width, then we have minimum width, and then we have maximum width. Right, these are the three things that we're gonna have. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and set a fixed width. I'm going not going to go ahead and select a minimum width. I'm gonna go ahead and select a maximum width, right? So, so that pretty much means that as the browser width scales, this also scales, but then it stops at a certain point because I defined a maximum width. So that's pretty much it about how you go ahead and understand the constraints that you have to create when you're designing websites as a designer because so that it becomes easy when it's coding. Now you can download this file again and you're gonna have all this there available in the, in, in the Figma file that you can download. So you guys can refer this if you ever need to. So I'll see you guys in the next video.